um, how do you say the, the yeah the ad, the ad or something ads yeah. for this uh, start recruiting yeah and uh, and so I've been mainly focused on that and creating particular committees like trying to get everything in order you know that was not so in order before and yeah. and so forth so yes I have great hope I think that the organ organizationally we're getting strong great and professional this way and um, uh cambodia yes in cambodia siem reap which is the second city where we have to close the restaurant and the yoga studio is to 90 percent li uh, people live off of tourism and tourism has been completely yeah. uh, uh, nixed in cambodia because mm -hmm. borders were closed yeah exactly so no, nobody existing get, yeah nobody could even get a tourist visa to come yeah. in Mm -hmm. Oh, basically, we were just paying rent, you know. Yeah, exactly, and and nothing, nothing. nothing I mean, return. initially we thought this thing was going to be over after three months, but you know, it didn't happen yeah. that way. Yeah, and we were lucky that the landlady, uh, you know, gave us a deal to get out of the lease. So we said, let's take the opportunity and go. Yeah, and focus our attention on just Phnom Penh. Mm -hmm. And Phnom Penh, the capital, is a very different situation because. Phnom Penh um, is more and more becoming, you know, a, a a city to be reckoned with in in Southeast Asia, and um, it has a diversified economy now. So there are people who are still making a living; they're not mm -hmm. like dependent on tourism. And um, we were actually able because Cambodia did really well during the first year of the pandemic. They only had about 500 reported cases within a oh, year. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Because they closed the borders. And I mean, they were very, very strict with yeah, quarantine. Yeah, that helps, of course. Yeah. Like that. And then, so, yeah. And so we were actually able to reopen the studio with some limited capacity in August. And we never were needed to close until March. And uh, during those months, more and more of our mm, partners, which are NGOs and businesses, we now have a lot of businesses who are demanding yoga for their um, their employees. Mm. So that's, that's actually our major source of revenue in Cambodia. Ah, great, great. We offer classes. Yeah. We also uh, offer classes for you know garment workers in these in these horrible like cheap clothing factories. Yeah, yeah. We have one or two of our teachers who come from that background who were garment workers mm -hmm. and now are able to teach yoga, which is Amazing, an incredible, right? yeah. incredibly empowering thing for them. You absolutely, know? absolutely, so amazing. And then again, as you said, before, as we said before, they can go to these factories and teach and really relate to the people there, like yeah, what they're yeah. going through. You know? Exactly, exactly. There is so that had really, that had really um, started to, to increase again. And then in March, there was, you know, somebody who did a community spread. And since then, the numbers have been quite high in Cambodia, but they're not out of control. And hmm. we were just, we are just able to open the Phnom Penh studio again now um, at the end of May, because we're out of the, yeah. the, the COVID, you know, yeah. um, say cluster now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, okay. Okay. Um, the idea now was to bring the restaurant um, to Phnom Penh because we have a kitchen in there too but not as big uh, I mean it's not like a real restaurant restaurant but to be able to do um delivery service ah, okay uh, I think uh is a good idea for the COVID uh, time because a lot of restaurants are closed and people are you know cautious about going out to eat and things like that so and it will still give you some money also, some money coming in at least then that way. Well, we hope so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we yeah. hope to open now in June and we'll try, try it out and see if it works. Great. Great. Does I mean, that's really, I think that's what's been happening here a lot as well with everybody. And I think there is definitely, uh, you know, people really loving this sort of, you know, at least they can still have takeaway food or, you know, I, I hope it works for you, you know? Yeah, I, I have yeah. the feeling it, 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 it'll work. I mean, it, yeah. you know, you always have to try, but yeah. um, 
you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that, that things will pick up again, but at the same time, you know, you just have to adapt to whatever is going on at this yeah. point. You have to yeah. be flexible yeah. and creative. And, um, you know, in Rwanda, we only have one organization we're working with at the moment because all the other ones, Mm -hmm. Either they require like weekly tests or, you know, it's or they've had to close or whatever. But we have one organization which is with survivors. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it, because they have an outdoor space, they're in the countryside. Ah, okay. So they can they just have, sit there. They have a grass outside. I can actually send you the video if you like. Um, yeah, I'd love to. And we'll put it in the for people to. Yeah, it's actually pretty amazing to, to see listen. how much this this practice helps people deal with. Of course. Trauma that is lodged in the body, in the mind. Yeah. You know, people who, I hear so many stories, you know, of people who have lost their sleep. They can't sleep. Yeah. And then once they start practicing yoga, they're sleeping again. Mm. I mean, it's just amazing, you know? Yeah, I think especially in places of war that you bring a practice of peace, you know, is, I think, in incredible, you know, and, and so needed. And what you're spreading, the seeds you're spreading with Azahar, yeah, it's so important. And uh, I really hope anybody listening, uh, you know, just give your money. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll put it in the I'll put it always in always needed of always course. need money always need money yeah I'm, I'm even thinking like I'd love to do um, a fundraiser for you anyway as well for like a yoga class and maybe we could do it around the time that I'm releasing this podcast I think that'd be amazing I, I'll that would be so I nice thank you so much I can. because you do you do that regularly too right you guys because I always get your newsletters and I feel like you do regular fundraisers for for the foundation right through your well yeah I mean uh, look I've been I've been lucky enough that I, I haven't myself been in financial need this year but um i have so i teach two classes a week to and i donate all the proceeds to to azahar yeah so great it's a, a little bit of income and a little bit of awareness also with the people who come you know yeah yeah see so you can people listening you can give you money and you have an amazing class from someone who's been teaching for 500 years so <laughs> Just do it already. Do it already. Because that's uh, like, we're, we're getting closer to the end. But what I was really wondering um, in general, like, are you still, do you still have the motivation to teach after all this time? And how is your motivation levels in this pandemic time? Because, you know, I know that you, as you said, like you're in Switzerland, just on a screen now, which is so different. I mean, I've been in your workshops where you have 200 people sweating on, sweating on their mats. So, I mean, it's so different. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, I mean, I think that this time for me was, you know, um, a time for retreat. And mm. if I think if I hadn't had to deal with Azahar, I would have not taught at all. But, um, but because I had to keep Azahar afloat, I decided to teach. And first I taught too much. And, you know, I think many of us realized that Teaching on Zoom is actually tiring, even if you can do it from home. It's not so, it's not so simple to do that. Um, now I've gotten quite used to it. I'm not a big tech person, and I have a fairly regular group of people who come, so um, it's it's nice to have that. And I've chosen to, to teach it at an intermediate, advanced level because mm. most people who are coming are very serious practitioners. So. Um, um yeah i just don't have time right now to teach something more more basic or more um yeah how yeah I but you also adapt to what's to who's yeah, coming I, there right like it's nice when you when you have this level of people coming then you just teach what yes like, i give options you know i yeah, give options yeah, when, yeah you know when when i teach something that's complex well first of all i work with a lot of repetition so mostly yeah. The beginning of the class is always very similar yeah and um and uh, i also give a spiritual teaching uh that can be helpful for this time you know and yeah. um and then and then when i when i add more challenging asanas i give people options to do something more more simple you yeah know, yeah to work in stages mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
but as like with, with the more repetitive parts of the class, the more you take it, the more you get used to the transitions yeah. and, and all of that. And then you can kind of get into your zone, you know, into mm. your zone. Yeah, exactly. Oh, exactly. what's going on, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and and so, besides, so at the moment you're just teach, teaching twice a week and then you also do some special workshops here and there, I think, right? At, the, at this stage. Yeah, I, I had been doing some workshops um, but for the summer, I'm going to take a break, you know, from nice. all of those extra things. Yeah. Because there's really so many things I need to work on right now in terms of um, fortifying the core of Azahar that yeah. I just can't be scattered all over the place. I have to really focus on that right now. That's also what you were just saying about like, ret- like nice to, to retreat and actually also really have that focus because I think it's kind of the boring stuff, but it's also extremely important for an organization like Azahar, of course, is all that paperwork and the admin and the, you know, the sort of, yeah, reestablishing the foundation again as well. You know, I think that's extremely important. Well, it's essential. I mean, yeah. if you run, a, run an organization professionally and that has credibility, you have to have yeah. all these things yeah. in place. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. the problem is that unless you have a really good, um ceo or administrative support who can who can handle all of that Mm -hmm. you know you can't be running around the world teaching and think you're gonna gonna have all those details under control i mean it's just not possible yeah yeah so so right now i really have to focus on that and you know when time comes i'm teaching the 300 hour teacher training this fall in italy between mid October to mid November, Jiva Mukti teacher training. Yeah, because that's both online and in person, right? It's both online and in yeah. person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, hoping that things will stay the same. For, yeah, exactly. For, for better. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, Eastern Europe. And that's the Europe. hopeful. That's the hopeful vision of uh, <laughs> where we're going towards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. You know. It's like life is like that. You you know you never know what's what's coming. I mean things can change in a snap of a finger. Yeah. It's because you're in a car accident or you break a leg or yeah. you lose your job or you get in. I mean, I just wrote in my newsletter. This is probably the strangest time and most challenging time we've ever experienced. Yeah, absolutely. Because most of yeah. us never lived through World War Two. Yeah. You know, at least here in Europe and in America, we haven't had um, war on our own soil. Um, yeah, exactly. We've been very lucky that way. Yeah, exactly. We've never had those extraordinary circumstances. Mm-hmm. So, so these things just happen. That's part of life. And we, we have to count our blessings when we're, you know, still able to have a roof of our head, not Absolutely. working on food on our table and and our orga- organic veggies delivered to our door exactly. right <laughs> as, as what just happened to you um exactly and do you feel like because what you just said was a, i think a really important point like our profession really got a hit like you know being a yoga teacher that kind of stuff do you are you pessimistic or optimistic about the future of yoga now like do you think things will change coming from this pandemic living well, I, th- I think yoga will always be there i mean yoga mm-hmm. is a is a universal perennial practice um the format in how it is going to be taught may change a bit yeah uh you know i'm not sure that we are going to have the same um format of these yoga studios with mat to mat packed classes at Mm -hmm. least not for a while i think yeah which Actually, I think it's maybe not a bad thing because <laughs> I feel that yoga has been so commercialized and there's yeah. been so much emphasis on like uh, just packing it in and having so many students and blah, blah, blah. And of course, of the financial reward from all of that. And to me, that is not really what yoga is. Mm-hmm. So uh, perhaps yoga will move again more into a direction where people will be teaching from their homes or where there will be more, you know, one-on-one or in smaller groups. Um, and we'll just have to figure out the economics of all of this, you yeah. know, how to, how to, how to work with all of that. But then at the same time, 
you know, I don't know. I think we, I, I thought that this pandemic might really take us into systemic changes and we might still see